So I walked away from the Democratic Party and the left more broadly. Officially in 2018, I left the Democratic Party. But there's a lot of context that sort of needs to be said instead of just sort of giving you kind of what the final straw was, which ultimately it ended up actually being the Kavanaugh confirmation hearings. But there's important context if you want to understand me and understand my story and how I came to leave the Democratic Party and the left. So I'll start by saying that, you know, what initially got me interested in left-wing politics circa like 2010 when I was a teenager and I first started getting interested in politics, it was because I was an atheist. And I'm still not super big on organized religion, but I've softened my stance a little bit towards it for sure, thanks to people like Ben Shapiro and Jordan Peterson sort of showing me some of the positive aspects of religion. And I certainly have a lot of respect for those guys and for a lot of religious people that I know. But around 2010, I was like a hardcore atheist. And I saw the religious fundamentalism of Christianity in particular coming from the right as, be, as being something that was very censorious, something that was opposed to freedom of speech in many ways, because there were certain jokes you can't tell. There are certain video games you can't play. There are certain things you cannot discuss or even acknowledge as it pertains to maybe it's related to sex or homosexuality or, or something that's violence like video games. There were all of these things that I was told as a teenager who wanted to have nuanced conversations, who wanted to do things that are taboo and rebellious and wanted to discuss those things in a nuanced and interesting way. I saw this censorship of all of that as really coming from the right at the time. Again, this is around like 2010. You know, there was a big scare during my childhood and my teenage years over, like I said, the violent video games, can't play video games. And I was a big gamer, so I didn't like that. I saw that as largely coming from the religious right. And in many ways it did. There was a big scare over homosexuality and a, and a frank discussion of sexuality in general, largely coming from the right. And a lot of this was done under the guise of religious fundamentalism, which I came to really, really dislike. And I still don't like fundamentalism. I still don't like religious fundamentalism. But where I feel the censorship and religious fundamentalism is coming from, the source of it, as far as I'm concerned today, is very different than what it was in 2010. A lot has changed in 10 years. So when I went off to college, I ended up joining the College Democrats because, again, I had this aversion to the right because of religious fundamentalism and censorship. And the fact that I felt like I could have more interesting conversations at that time when I started college in the early 2010s, I felt like I could have more interesting and frank conversations about a lot of topics with people on the left because I still felt like the censorship was coming from the right. And, you know, at first that worked out for me during my first year of college. And then, you know, around year two, it was around year like 20, it was like 2014, 15. I started to notice something going on in my own house on the left, in my own little political home, was something very disturbing to me as someone who doesn't like fundamentalism and dogma and censorship. For someone who is pro-free speech, there was something very distressing going on on the left because it was around this time, 2014, 15, when feminism and Black Lives Matter and all of these identity group based ideologies started to just explode in terms of power and influence, especially on a college campus where I was at the time. And all of the sudden, I would have conversations with my left-wing peers and my right-wing peers, because I had right-wing peers. I've always liked to have people on both sides of the political spectrum in my friend groups, in my social groups. And in my discussions, all of the sudden, I was being censored and I was being told there were certain things that I cannot discuss, even in a nuanced and facts-driven way, even coming from a good place, because I always try to come from a good place when I discuss politics. All of the sudden, all of that kind of censorship and all of that kind of like, oh, don't talk about that. No, free speech be damned. You can't talk about that that way, even if it's true. That started to come from the left. And it started to come from the left mostly as a result of these identity-based political movements like feminism, where, you know, I couldn't talk about the wage gap or rape culture in a frank and honest way. 
things like that, things that are hogwash and that I knew were hogwash. Even when I was on the left, I was like, I've looked into the statistics on these things. This just isn't true. You know, I was on the left because I was kind of part of the new atheist movement and I ha had left-wing economic views. I still have left-wing economic views, but I didn't believe in the wage gap. I didn't believe that we live in a rape culture. And then with Black Lives Matter in 2014, 15, it was kind of the first wave. Now we have this new wave of Black Lives Matter. There was the initial wave after Michael Brown. Um, you know, there was a little bit of a thing after Trayvon Martin, but it wasn't quite the same because a, a cop didn't shoot and kill Trayvon Martin. So really it exploded in 2014 when Michael Brown was killed by a police officer. And I looked into it and that was completely justified. He, he, he attacked the cop and so the cop shot him because newsflash, you can't hit cops. You can't try to take cops guns. They'll shoot you and they should. Sorry, like uh, it's it's tragic. I think it's terrible when a when a young person, whether they're black, white, or whatever, uses loses their life. But if they did something stupid like hit a cop or try to take their gun, and this this is something I said at the time in 2014 when it happened to Michael Brown, and people told me like, no, you can't say that. Like, why are, the people were like, why are you even bothering to look into the facts? They're like, all that matters is that a black person was hurt by a cop, and that's racism. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. What about the facts though? And they were like, no, the facts don't matter. What you're saying is racist. And I was like, what? Race? What? I'm not racist. Like, like, no one's racist. There are so few racists in this country, and there's certainly very few racists on this campus that people will talk about how our college campus was an environment that had racism. And I was like, there's very little racism in this country, period, let alone on a college campus like where I was at the time. So I'm having this weird experience around 2014, 15, where I'm in the college Democrats and I'm rising through the ranks of, you know, democratic activism, and I'm pretty far on the left. And I still have pretty left-wing economic views. I'm going to talk about that later. I'm still in many ways not diametrically opposed to left-wing policies. But the rhetoric and the censorship was something that really made me start to think like, are these really my people? Like my people have to be the people who want to have frank discussions. They have to be the people who are pro-free speech. That is, it. That, that is a need for me. That is, an, that is a deal breaker for me. If you're not pro-free speech, I can't identify with your political movement. And in 2014, 15, I started to come on to the fact that the left had a problem with freedom of speech and censorship and that they had this. And this is what really disturbed me about it. Remember, I, I was an atheist, still not a huge fan of religion, but Needless to say, this is all to say, there was a religious aspect to this censorship on the left. The, the right absolutely does not have a monopoly on religious fundamentalism, as I learned in this instance, because intersectionality or social justice, being an SJW, being woke, what I call woke supremacy, this stuff is inherently religious. It had all the trappings of, of religious fundamentalism, namely that it kept people from thinking freely and wanting to have frank discussions about things in the pursuit of truth, which is what I am doing when I have political discussions. I am pursuing truth. And I've always liked doing this. This is who I am and what I want to do. And I noticed that the censorship on the left wasn't just censorship. It wasn't just anti-free speech. It was religious and culty. It was like a cult. Like people just would not think freely. And if you went against them, they'd get so angry and they'd cast you out and call you a bigot. You know, on the right, maybe they call you a blasphemer or tell you what you said was offensive. And they do the same exact thing on the left, except call you a bigot, which is almost worse. Like I'd rather be called a blasphemer than a bigot. I'd rather be called, you know, maybe the right would call you in the early 2000s. Maybe they'd call you unpatriotic or something or, 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 or whatever. But we wouldn't call you racist. I mean, that's a label that, carries so much weight. And when people call you that, it's horrifying. And people would call me this when I spoke out against Black Lives Matter or Islamic extremism or feminist extremism and just the hogwash that goes into all of these things, the bunk statistics. And so I started to get a little bit of this sense that if I'm anti-religious fundamentalism and I'm anti-censorship, maybe I don't belong on the left. But I persisted as a democratic liberal activist for a couple of years because I felt like this stuff was unique to college campuses, especially being on a college campus at the time. People told me like, you know, some people tried to calm me down. They're like, hey, you know, I understand these people are kind of extreme, these SJWs, these wokesters, but you know, it's just college campuses. Once you get out of here, you'll be free of it. You know, just deal with it now and it'll get better later. And I, 
I wasn't sure if they were right, but I was like, I hope you're right. <laughs> I just kind of hoped. And so I went on, still being a Democrat, still being a leftist, until I noticed it actually starting to seep into the Democratic Party itself and like the left establishment. Like it went from kind of the crazy college kids to being the left Democratic establishment. And at first, they would just ignore things, the Democratic establishment. So for instance, after the 2016 election was the big turning point, the, the SJWs and the woke left completely lost their fucking minds after Trump won. Oh my God. And look, I was upset too, because again, remember, I'm a leftist at this point. I'm a, a Democrat. I was upset when Trump won. I'm still not a Trump supporter, although my, my views on him have changed a little bit. I'm still not a Trump supporter. I was upset when he won, but the, the, the SJW woke left that I was never fully a part of, even though I was a Democratic activist, they just went crazy. And you had something like the UC Berkeley riot and the Democratic Party that I had been told would control these people like, oh, just remember, it's just the left activists. It's just the college campuses. It's just the college SJWs. It won't leave the campus. This isn't going to be become a thing for the Democratic Party. They'll protect you. And I believed that to an extent. And then the UC Berkeley riot happened when Milo Yiannopoulos went to speak at UC Berkeley and they fucking burned down the school courtyard prevented his speech from taking place by attacking people and assaulting them and starting fires and they're macing people. They're hitting them with bats. It was awful. And I saw the footage in February of 2017. I'm still a Democrat at this point. And I said, what is this? How are we letting this happen? How are we not calling this out as Democrats and as liberals? How are we not saying this is unacceptable? I just, I believed up until that point as a political thinker, I had just always believed, okay, Democrats and Republicans disagree on things. But at the point where it comes to blows, they'll calm it down. I always just thought, you know, if a, if a Democrat physically assaults a Republican, which is what was happening at UC Berkeley, was this, you know, Republican conservative speaker was coming. And so the kids that wanted to go watch him, not all of whom were even conservative, but nonetheless, they were attacked, physically attacked. And they had to cancel the event. They censored his speech through politically motivated violence, also known as terrorism. There's no other word for that. That's what it is. It's this violence with the political goal to censor the speech. It's terrorism. And so this terrorism, I always thought, was like the left and the right is against this. Like our country will never come to this. The Democratic Party will call this out. And I believed, and I think to an extent it's still true, that the, the Republican Party would do so if something happened on the left. You know, if, if I don't know, super far right white nationalists went and, and attacked some left wing speaker in his audience, I feel like the right would call it out. But after the UC Berkeley riots, nobody said anything. None of the Democrats said a goddamn thing. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and the leaders on the left, not even Barack Obama, would say a thing. Barack Obama, who had just left office, who I admired and believed in, didn't say a damn thing about left-wing terrorism at UC Berkeley. And this was my red pill moment. This was when I really started to think, I got to walk away from this. Like, these are not my people. If you're not willing to call this out, then I can't be a part of, of, of this thing, whatever it is, this cult. I was disgusted. I was disgusted by UC Berkeley and the response to it, where some, you know, the Democratic Party brass, the establishment Democratic Party in DC ignored it. And then you had student activists and college Democrats supporting it openly in the school newspaper at UC Berkeley. And some of my colleagues in the, the sort of youth Democratic activism uh, world at the time, you know, I was still a part of that world. I was still pretty young. I was in my early 20s, still in college. They were telling me like, no, this guy's a Nazi. They shouldn't be allowed. And I was like, he's not a Nazi. Like, what? like you, you, can't, you can't just attack this guy's event. It was crazy. People were defending it. People were ignoring it. And it finally got me to think like, oh, the Democratic Party itself, like the left-wing establishment is losing its mind. But at this point, I'm still a Democrat. I still didn't leave the Democratic Party because I was like, okay, I mean, I'm not a Republican. I'm not conservative. I don't want to support Trump. So I'll stay a Democrat and I'll try to get them to see that they need to speak out against this stuff. Because my idea was, well, if they're ignoring it, but they're not necessarily explicitly endorsing it, maybe I can talk some sense into them because they just don't understand how big of a problem it is. And after the evergreen college thing, I tried to use that as evidence, like, look how bad this can get. A whole college campus had a meltdown. They basically formed an, almost like a lynch mob around Brett Weinstein, who is a progressive, just like I was. 
And I tried to use the Evergreen College meltdown as evidence and say, look, look how bad this thing can get. There's these Maoist takeovers on universities and they still with the, oh, it's just, it's a college campus. Don't worry about it. Oh God. So this is 2017 now. We're getting to my official walk away moment in 2018. So all this time, I'm like, I'm still on the left. I'm still a Democrat. I still voted Democrat. And, you know, like I voted for, for Clinton in 2016. And we're getting to around the 2018 election cycle. And this whole time, I've been having discussions with people who are like, don't worry, it's just college campuses. That's all Evergreen was. That's all UC Berkeley was. The Democratic Party is not going to accept the wokeness and the social justice and the woke supremacy full scale. And we get to Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearing in September, October of 2018. And we see these rape allegations brought up by the Democrats and propped up, even though they were most likely false. There was no evidence. All I asked for when this happened was a shred of evidence supporting the notion that Brett Kavanaugh had committed the crime of which he was accused, which was attempted rape. And I would take that very seriously if it were true, but it probably wasn't. I wasn't there. I can't say with 100% certainty, but I can say with like 98 or 99% certainty, this didn't happen. This woman who is a Democrat, is a leftist, didn't say anything for 35 years, comes up at the last minute during Brett Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings and is propped up by the Democrats saying that he attempted to rape her in the, I think she said it was in like the 80s. And they, the Democrats did this like full court press, this full machine politics bullshit of propping up these most likely false allegations. And it was all under the guise of like, believe all women of feminism, which is one of the tenets of woke supremacy, of intersectionality, of, of social justice activism. And I went, guys, this is the Democratic Party. That was the moment where I knew it's the Democratic Party. It's not just some crazy BuzzFeed journalists. It's not just some crazy college kids. It's the Democratic Party, okay? They have fully accepted this woke stuff, feminism and believe all women, the, the whole Me Too thing, which look, of course, I'm against sexual harassment and assault, but a lot of the Me Too stuff turns out to be false. This was most likely false. All of that Me Too and feminism stuff, it's woke stuff. It's social justice warrior stuff. And the Democrats completely incorporated it into their platform and into who they are and into their DNA as a party when they, they ramrodded, they railroaded Brett Kavanaugh with these almost certainly false allegations for which there was not a shred of evidence and there was plenty of evidence to the fact that they probably were not true. So in October of 2018, I left the Democratic Party. That was it. That was it. I just, I couldn't do it anymore. I had no excuse. I had nothing. And I told people, like, I just, I, I don't know how to tell you that this is wrong. I don't know how to tell you that beating people for their political views and attacking political events, terrorism is wrong. I don't know how to tell you that false allegations of rape are a bad thing and that they happen and that they're awful and that what was done to Brett Kavanaugh was awful because it was deceptive and it was manipulative. It was using false rape allegations for political points, for political purposes. That's disgusting. And I couldn't be a part of the Democratic Party that was partaking in it. So I left. I left the Democratic Party in October of 2018. And in 2018, when I voted, I voted split ticket. I voted for some Democrats that I thought were still pretty reasonable. And I voted for some Republicans that I thought were pretty reasonable. I did that for the first time in my life. Up until that point, I had voted Democrat, always. Voted for Clinton in 2016. So, you know, that's my story of why I walked away from the Democratic Party in a nutshell was because of religious fundamentalism, the religion of wokeness, the religion of woke supremacy, social justice nonsense, the censorship of free speech, the attacking people for their speech, the terrorism, trying to block political speech through violence the propping up of false allegations, all in the name of wokeness, all in the name of this self-righteous bullshit where they say that, it's oh, it's for women and minorities. No, it's not. It's for power. The Democratic Party doesn't give a shit about women and minorities. 
You know that because whenever a woman or minority says anything vaguely conservative or anti-woke, they get attacked by the left, just like at UC Berkeley, just like at Evergreen. So they don't care about minorities and women. They care about power. They think that wokeness is a way to get cheap constituents that'll clap like seals every time they do something vaguely pro-woman or pro-minority. And I'm not about that. I'm about the nuance. I'm about the honest and frank discussion of what's going on and being a free thinker. So I left Democratic Party. I walked away from the Democratic Party. That's my walk away story. Now, I want to add a caveat to this. And that's, this is an important, this is kind of one of the core ideas of me saying all of this. I am still in many ways a liberal. I have some very liberal economic views. I have some pretty liberal social views. My positions and who I am as a person are the same. I am still non-religious. I am not a conservative by any stretch. I am not a Republican. I am a registered independent. I am not supporting in 2020, nor did I just support in 2016, Donald Trump. I don't think he's the best person for the job to be president. I, you know, this is something I want to talk about more, but I just, I, I personally cannot get behind Trump. I understand more so people that do. I certainly understand more after my walk away journey than I did four years ago, but I, I'm not supporting him in 2020. And in saying all of this, I want to make sure people understand you don't have to support Donald Trump or even be a Republican or a conservative to walk away from the Democratic Party. That's not what I did. I didn't become a conservative. I didn't become a Republican. I just walked away from the Democrats and from the woke progressive left thing that is taking them over. And if you think Joe Biden's going to fight back against it, oh, you've got another thing coming. So walk away from the Democratic Party. If you feel the way I feel, if you don't like this woke stuff, if you don't like censorship, if you're pro-free speech, walk away from the Democratic Party. If you don't like false allegations, if you don't like, if you don't full sail accept 100% all of the dogma of feminism and Black Lives Matter and all of the identity politics, Walk away from the Democratic Party. And don't worry about like, oh, does that make me a Trump voter? Does that make me a Republican? Does that make me a conservative? No, I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. Maybe you go all the way to the right. That's fine too if it's genuine and it's what you now believe after getting new information. That's great. But you don't have to do that. You can be like me. You can be an independent free thinker who's not associated with either party, who's not supporting either candidate. I'm not supporting Biden or Trump in 2020. Hell no. I'll write someone in or I'll, I'll not vote at all. So you don't have to support Trump or even be a Republican to walk away from the Democrats. So do it. If you don't like identity politics, if you don't like woke BS, if you don't like the religious dogma of woke supremacy, walk away from the Democratic Party like I did, and you will be so much better off for it. I feel so much better now. I have made great friends in kind of like the intellectual dark web space, in the political centrism space, in the, in the free thinking space. I have made better friends than I ever have the people who are calling me racist for being a free thinker. Way better off, way better off than I was. So do it, man. <laughs> if you're listening to this and you're tempted to leave, but you're afraid of that, you know, I don't want to support Trump. I don't want to be a Republican. You don't have to. Just leave the Democratic Party. Get the hell out of there. Because this woke stuff has taken over and it is ruining our politics and it has certainly taken over the Democratic Party and ruined that party. Can't be a part of that if you're for freedom of speech, if you're a free thinker. So walk away. Walk away from the Democratic Party.